wrong thing I was going to take off. Okay. See, I was going to do this. I didn't need to take my hat off because I haven't done my hair. Um, okay. Good question. Well, I mean, it's a simple answer. Uh, you know, it's a legitimate question to ask the IEP team if they all read the procedural safeguards or am I opening up a bad can of worms? It's not a can of worms, uh, not a can of roaches, it's not a can of coffee, it's not a can of anything. Um, and I can tell you, the parents are required to get a copy of the procedural safeguards, but I have parents that don't even read the procedural safeguards. Um, in fact, the majority of parents don't read the procedural safeguards. And, you know, there's a minimal requirement as to what the federal law, the IDEA, dictates that the states must put into their procedural safeguards. But, you know, so you have sort of a base set of information that is required for all states. But then how they dress it up is 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 varied, okay? Because, I mean, we, we have offices in Alabama, Tennessee, uh, New Mexico. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we can take cases. I haven't, I'm not going to name some of the other ones we take cases in um, because we're not yet set up to absorb that. We're really not set up yet in some of the other ones uh, fully to take the brunt of the need. So... Uh, you know, so anyway, back to what I was saying. So how they dress it up and the story they tell within the, the procedural safeguards that exist in the various states. Um, you know, for example, New Mexico's, it, it, it's, it, it reads horribly. Um, it, it's uh, one that I was actually considering doing a, uh, a presentation on. Um, Alabama's is, uh, is a bit robotic, uh, and legalistic, uh, with regards to its, its explanation. Um, and I can see why parents would glance over it, but not really pour into it. Um, you know, at the same time, New Mexico's is more, uh, written in a, uh, it's the parent's fault kind of way. Uh, in presented in a way that that uh, the school really doesn't have to do that much, which is not accurate. But that also may be the reason they're number fifty in the country, fifty one actually, behind Washington D.C. and that's a feat. Uh, so, is there a requirement that the school individuals read the procedural safeguards? No, there's no requirement that they do that, and. There's also no requirement that they even read the IDEA or whatever your state code is uh, that replicates the IDEA. There's no requirement that they do that. Uh, in fact, within the IDEA, there's even a little caveat that, uh, that is in there to where the school people individually and also as a school are not held individually liable for your child not making progress and for them not necessarily following the rules. Now, at the same time, that doesn't mean that you don't have your procedural safeguards in the form of mediation, a state complaint, due process, things of that nature for corrective action. Uh, corrective action is a different animal than individual liability for them not being competent. But you really want to blow your mind, then let's look at other industries, okay? The Supreme Court has already determined, for example, that the police don't have to know the law. Don't have to know the law. Now, do I think that's insane? Absolutely, I think that's insane because otherwise, how are you arresting people? What are you, what are you, what are you arresting them for if you don't understand the parameters of the law? But the Supreme Court said that they don't have to know the law. Now, on one level, I sort of understand that because who is it that applies the law? It's not police. They enforce it or they enforce their idea of what they think the law says, but that's what judges and lawyers are for, to sit there and banner back and forth with regards to the elements of the law and whether or not the crime or whatever the infraction met those elements as to punishment and consequence and, and liability and things of that nature. But when it comes to the IDEA, 
the child's ability to, to receive a FAPE doesn't require that everybody along the chain have full knowledge and understanding of the IDEA. They just don't have to in order for the child to receive a FAPE because their other training uh, as a speech language pathologist or as a resource teacher, or as a special edu education teacher, as a general education teacher, those hats don't necessarily have to know all of the inner workings of the law. They just need to know components of it. And in doing their job and the training they, they have um, commiserate with, let's say, their master's degree or their doctorate degree um, or their bachelor's degree, then feed into your child making progress and achieving their goals and, and substantive change, okay? Um, so they don't really need to know that stuff. Now, the other mind blower is that principals in most of our states do not have to be competent, and I think that they should. I think that they should have to pass a competency and understanding of what the law says uh, with regards to special education and 504. But they don't. Most states don't. The ones that I interact with, at least, absolutely do not. And they are the biggest source of our due process uh, issues. And they are the biggest source of the mistakes. And so if principals were trained, and if they were competent, and if they, if they did pay attention, and if they spent more time trying to have good positive relationships and transparency and good flow of communication with the parents that have the specified right to challenge you legally, you would think that they would do it. It just is proactive and it's the smart thing to do as a principal. Um, believe me, it's a smart thing to do. It's worth the ounce of, of knowledge and the pound of knowledge that you gain uh, to, to get the prevention on, on the back end of parents not ringing your bell every five seconds. But instead, no, who do they make happy? You know, the, the football dad. Uh, the cheerleader mom. That's who, th those people don't have any kind of legal right to sue you. Whereas 504 parents, uh, Title IX, um, IDEA, they, they can ring your bell. And they do. But yet, you know, that's where I think that there should be an expanded knowledge and an understanding is on the LEA level uh, and on the special education director level. And even them, even a lot of them, uh, and, and the supervisors that that uh, that he'll help oversee special education um, are not truly competent in it. Now, with regards to aside from the procedural safeguards, what are the things that should be read at every meeting? And that is the child's IEP, and everybody should have a copy. And in every state that I am aware. Everybody who touches that IEP has to sign a form that says that they have received a copy, they have read it, and they fully understand it. And that document should be put in your child's education record uh, so that you can request it and know that these people signed off that they re did receive it. And I can tell you, I get education record time and time and time again, and that document is frequently missing. Um, and then when I hear, I end up finding out that uh, if a child is majority general education, they had most of these people had no idea uh, until halfway through the school year or toward the end that the child even had an IEP or what their role as a general educator was in the child's uh, IEP program and, and their ability to receive a FAPE. So if you're in an IEP meeting, the bigger can of worms is is asking whether everybody at the team has read your child's IEP, understands your child's needs and deficits, and, and whether they're going to receive the IEP once you're done. And that's everybody along the chain, not the procedural safeguards. It's the IEP, okay? Good question.